Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to this edition of Race Face Spotlight. Today, we're going to go out to Falcon, Colorado, where we find young racer Justice Sokol, half of the Red Army. Justice, how are you doing this evening? I'm doing good, and yourself? I'm doing great, man. I'm talking to you. How much better could it be? So what's been going on over the winter? I know that, uh, you know, we're all kind of under the race ban here with the uh, coronavirus going on. So what have you been up to? Well, what I've been up to is we had the two races, the Tulsa shootout and um, the mid inaugural Midwest Winter Nationals race down in Decoy, Illinois. We had those two races and then um, the coronavirus came around and uh, we went under quarantine and we've been having to hunker down inside our houses and everything and um while while that was happening we've been doing some deep maintenance on the cars making sure everything's straight ready to go for when we go back racing and then other than being out in the garage doing that we've been down here i racing on the sim yeah so let's talk about the tulsa shootout a lot of people that haven't been there what is that like to race in that venue, that kind of historic venue? Talk about how big that is, how loud it is, and, and, and what a great time that you had there. The Tulsa Shootout, it's an, it's an awesome place to be able to go out and race, race at. Uh, last year was, or this year was my second year racing there. I went out there, I raced both my restricted and junior sprint car. And that those were both a lot of fun. I made the junior sprint into the A main, and then uh, in my restricted car, I was in the B main, and unfortunately didn't transfer out. But it was just an awesome time being able to go out there, experience what it's like being able to run a restricted 600 car there. And it's like you um, like you said, it's loud, but you also gotta you also gotta be careful that um, you don't breathe in too much of those fumes because that can get bad. That's right. That's why I didn't get to come out as my doctor was a little worried about all the carbon monoxide that I was going to be inhaling out there, but I sure wish I would have been there. So let's back up a little bit. Um, now that you're kind of quarantined there in Colorado, you're uh, attending virtual school. How's that been going? I like virtual school better because I'm able to work at my own pace, get work done as fast as I want it to get done. Um, I actually got my work done yesterday for the entire week, so I have Friday off to get stuff um, to get stuff for the podcast uh, done and ready because we um, do it on Friday. So you're a big fan of the virtual side of school. So do you wish things would, you know, the ban would be lifted, we'd go back racing, but you had the option to continue as a virtual student. Yeah, I do that, but the only downfall part is that I'm not able to go to school and see my friends. Yeah, that's true. So I can see that you're setting at your simulator. I know that you've been doing a lot of racing. You're getting ready to actually start the uh, Junior Late Model Next Series, which starts on May 5th. So how's the simulator testing and let's just call it the educational factor of what's, uh, what you've been learning on the simulator. How's that been going? Oh, the simulator has been awesome. We got some updates to it. Um, we got an update on the steering wheel and pedals, actually, and those are really good updates. And um, just I haven't really learned much. I've just been practicing as much as I can. I've been learning a little bit here and there, but I'm definitely going to start getting, like, learning a lot for when I go into the Junior 8 Model Esports next series. And also, I was in the Lucas Oil Now 600 360 wing sprint car race at Eldora, last week on Monday and um, that was a that was a fun race to be able to race there. Unfortunately I didn't make it to the A main in that um, but it was a lot of fun. So you gone from micro sprint to 360s at Eldora. That's a big jump. How did how did uh, what was that race slice? Walk us uh, through a little bit of that. So well Basically, we went, we were right, we were doing practice and then we went into the qualifying session and we were doing a little bit of, we, we didn't qualify the greatest, let me just say that, but then in the um, heat race, uh, some cars wrecked out in front of me, in front of me and I finished fourth, one spot out of transferring into the A main and then um, in the, and then in the B main, I started second and I was um, racing and then I hit the wall 
because it was slick all the way up to the top. So I hit the wall and I lost a few spots and I wasn't able to transfer. Yeah, a little bit more power in that sprint car than your micro sprint? Yeah. A little bit, huh? So let me ask you a question. What do you think that you're learning on the sim that you're going to be able to carry over to a real car once we get back to live racing? Well, that's a good question, Rob, because on the sim, you're basically working on your hand-eye coordination. But then when you go into the real race car, you're using all your senses. You're, you're feeling what's, what's happening under you um, with the steering wheel, and you're also seeing. So I think with the sim, you're, it's, hoping, it's helping strengthen um, your hand-eye coordination. But then when you get in the real car, you're using all those senses. Yeah. So when are they going to be delivering the 360 sprint car? I'm not sure. You're not sure. I, I, I want it to be like I want it to be like when we start racing again. Um, that's not going to happen for a while. All right. So we're talking about i racing. I heard you were on the other side of the spectrum, and I heard that you actually spotted for your older brother Colby during one of the junior late model advance races. So what was that like? That was a lot of fun because I was I was spotting him, and I was able to. Um, experience what it was like to be a spotter for my brother if I were ever going to be a spotter for him again or even if I were going to be a spotter for anybody else. Um, there's definitely things I need to work on like being on being on time making sure I'm like that I'm fast on telling him where the cars are and everything because if you're not if you're not quick on that then like that that driver depends on you because if you're not quick on it then something might happen. That's right and you got to figure out how, because, you know, sometimes with the internet connections, you see these cars blinking and they're there mm -hmm. and then they're gone and then they're back. And that's got to be tough from a spotter's position to be able to uh, navigate through that. Did you have any of those instances that happened? Um, well, there were, there were some cars around, around us that were blinking out here and there. But I was, I was watching them very closely, seeing where they were, because usually they, they'll glitch out and they'll be behind you, and then they can glitch out, glitch in right on your outside. So I was, I was making sure I was keeping an eye on those cars. But, yeah, there was, there was quite a few of them that were doing that. Yeah, so last night's race in the Advanced Series, we actually, if we saw a car that was um, having an Internet connection issues and was blinking out, uh, we basically black flagged them because we didn't feel that it was fair to, if you're running behind somebody and all of a sudden they disappear and you start to move up and then the next thing you know, they pop up and you're already into them. We didn't think that was fair. And, and I know that's a, a tough deal because it's really not anything that the driver does. But again, internet connection is something that's very, very important to iRacing. So, uh, uh, we talked a little bit about real racing and you actually being at the Tulsa shootout. You said that you had two cars there, the Junior Sprint and a 600 Micro Sprint. For the viewers that are watching that don't know the difference between those two cars, can you explain that to us? Well, 600 is obviously a bigger car, bigger motor, lots of more power than a Junior Sprint smaller car, smaller motor or less power. So, um, and then in the 600, when you're racing along the track, you're changing lanes as the race goes on, trying to find the fastest way around the track. But then when you're doing your sprint, you're hugging the bottom, making sure you don't give up that line because then the car behind you will sneak right in there and get you. But, but also in the juice, you're mainly trying to pass the bottom of them because when you get up top, you're basically losing momentum or, or, um, you're making it a longer way around the track, but then in the 600, you're passing top, bottom, throwing slide jobs, just trying to figure out a nice way around those cars. How old are you? I'm 11. 11 years old. That's a lot of information for an 11 year old. I think that's amazing that you understand the car at the, at the level that you are, both whether you're on a simulator or in a real race car, it's very, very impressive. And I can tell you what, I, I can uh, think back at what I was doing at 11 and probably wasn't anywhere close to what you're uh, already accomplished. So congratulations to that. So I know that when you're running the 600 micro sprint, you have two different cars that you can run with a wing or without a wing. Which one do you prefer? If it came down to me having to say wing or non-wing, I'd choose non-wing 
because you're up on the wheel more, you're driving the car more, um, you're using the throttle a lot more, but then when you run, you're that's and you're not on the wheel as much and you're not uh, working the pedal as much. Yeah, so let me ask you, I know a lot of good things about the wings. If you do get upside down, it kind of cushions that blow a little bit. Have you been upside down in either one of the winged or the non-wing? And if so, what's the difference been um, as far as the impact when that uh, happens between those two cars? I've only been over in non-wing, I mean in wing, um, and that was at this one race and that, that was, uh, was coming to the green flag because uh, the leader was brake checking. So he brake checked right there and I had to swerve out of the way and then the car just tipped over on its side. It wasn't much of a hard hit, but um, it, it can be, a, it can, I bet you it will get us a little scary if you, if you go for a wild ride. Yeah, I'm sure it can. So one of the things that a lot of people may not know about you yet is that you and your brother actually do a podcast called the So Cool Brothers Podcast. What's that been like um, actually doing this podcast and, and every week it looks like you guys just get so much better at it and you get more viewers on it. So uh, how's that been? Oh, that's been a lot of fun because it, it takes a lot of hard work in, in practicing, taking notes before we even get in. Um, it just takes a lot for us to be able to get those podcasts because we want to make sure that they're good for the fans that are watching out there so they can they can know what's going on in our racing career and about different tracks, parts on the race car, um, and different people that are sponsoring and supporting us. So I know from doing a lot of shows myself that every once in a while things just don't go as planned. Is there anything really funny that happened between you and Colby during one of these podcasts? Well, I know you guys saw that there was a one blooper uh, video that we posted where me and Colby got frustrated or that Colby got frustrated at me. Um, but in our last podcast, um, we had Racer in it, as you guys saw, and um, we we were doing a we were doing a run and then all of a sudden we said it I said the intro and then out of nowhere racer just falls off of where he was sitting and it and it made us start it made us crack up laughing because it was just like an out of nowhere thing that was going fine and then all of a sudden he just fell. <laughs> that is funny and we may get a meat racer in just a couple minutes. So, what does the twenty twenty season look like? Is there a track that you're most excited to race at? And then is there a track that you're maybe a little nervous going to? Um, I'm most excited for going back to the Tulsa shootout, especially that's my number one place that I want to get back to because last year um, was my last year running the junior sprint and my first year running the 600. And I, I learned a lot from running the 600 there. So I'm going to use that to my advantage from coming into next year's Tulsa shootout. And um, I'm going to use everything that I learned and I'm going to learn even more. But my the track I'm also excited to go back to and race at is Port Cities. Um, and that's because it's my favorite track to go and race at. And it's just, a, it's just an awesome small bank track in general. And the competition at Port City is pretty, pretty stout. I mean, some of the best micro sprint racers in the country seem to navigate to Port City. So uh, good luck when you actually head back to that truck. So when Justice is not racing, what else do you do for hobbies? Or what do you like to do when you're not behind the wheel of the car? When I'm not behind the wheel of the car, I'm either out in the garage helping, helping out with the cars, working on them, or I'm down here i racing on the sim, or even um, we built a dirt RC car track in our backyard, so we take our RC cars out there and we uh, will race our RC cars against each other, and that's a lot of fun going back there and doing that because it's racing. Yeah, that's cool. I didn't know you guys were RC racing. So who's the king of the Sokol household in the RC cars? Well, that's, that's a hard question because... Um, it's me, Colby, and a friend from up the street, but um, Col one of Colby's RC cars broke, and we haven't been able to order a part because they've been out of stock, so Colby's just been racing a different one that's not as fast and as good, and I've been racing my regular gas-powered one, and I've had I've had a good chance, but our friend from up the street, he's 
he has a he has one that's set up for that track. So he he he's usually one that's he's usually the one that's the king of the racetrack. He's the king. Huh? So we've been talking a lot about racer. Is racer available to make an appearance on the show with us? Yeah, he's coming in. He's he's right here actually. Racer, why don't you look at the fans? So what's up, Racer? <laughs> He's just just chilling out. Chilling out, okay. Well, uh, Justice, thank you so much for being with us tonight. Uh, do you want to give a shout out to any of your sponsors? Oh, I'd like to thank Rainbow Sprinklers, Peak View Plumbing, Stollard, EMI Speedway, Yoshimura, Angler, Advanced Racing Suspensions, my Nan and Papa, Grandma and Papa Lee, and especially my mom, dad, brother, and little racer dude for always being there, helping and supporting me. And especially I'd like to thank my fans and supporters out there for um, also supporting me. Well, awesome. Well, Justice, we're going to look forward to checking back to you later this year once you get back behind the wheel and back to real racing. Until then, stay safe. Get a lot of practice in on your sim. If you want to follow Justice, make sure to check him out at justicesocalracing.com. There you can connect with all of his social media platforms. And don't forget to visit this fan zone and sign up for his new digital newsletter. So Justice, thanks for being with us. For all of you, thanks for tuning in to Raceface Spotlight. My name is Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.